So I got a DeepMind internship interview, but I didn't apply the standard way. I spent months applying to different listings and getting rejected over and over again until I tried out something new. It really brought my application success rates to the next level. So in this video, I will share what this uncommon technique is and how to apply it step by step. Now, this is important. I need you to think this through with me. What really is an application? Well, let's say a product manager, team lead or researcher, let's call him Sam, is looking for a person who can help with a certain project. They just want to find a person that will do a good job on the project and be a good fit for the team. If they happen to know a person that they have worked with in the past and liked working with, they could just ask them to join the project. But that is rarely possible. Sam needs to find a great candidate out of a pool of dozens or hundreds of applicants. Ideally, this process can be automated. That's where the automatic resume scanners come into play and where recruiters rush through applications and hope to not miss a gold needle in the haystack. The moral of this story is that the fundamental goal of having an application pipeline is for a human being, Sam, to find someone they would enjoy working with. And here comes the crazy idea. What if we find a person like Sam that we want to work with and reach out to them specifically? Now, why is reaching out to a specific person better? And when does this not work so well? The thing is, Sam is not the only one in a large company looking for new friends. Other colleagues are doing the same, and this official application process filters out generally good candidates, and they then find a group that might be fitting. If you reach out to Sam directly, this not only avoids this first filtering step, but also shows that you are interested in Sam specifically at least if you do it properly. That is really cool. Sam now feels special and can have a look at your more or less unofficial application himself. But this only works if Sam has the time to read your email and is not equally overflowed with requests, just like the official application pipeline. So I would not necessarily recommend you to reach out to Jan Lecker, Demis Sasabis, the CEO of Google and so on, but you get the point. Honestly, you obviously could, but there the chances are just a bit slim. But now Sam appreciates that you went the extra mile to find him and his work. This is especially true for researchers, at least in my opinion and experience. In research, it is very common to collaborate across institutions and build networks of researchers we look up to or enjoy or would enjoy working with. Now, you're probably asking yourself, how do I find a person like Sam? Well, one simple way is to actually use LinkedIn and other social media to find people working at your dream company. On LinkedIn, you can search for people working at Google, for example. But this is not my preferred method and not the one I used. I am a machine learning student researcher and I am interested in multimodal learning, specifically vision and text. So I naturally read papers on that topic. In each paper, there's a list of authors and their emails. So you can now simply write down all authors from the paper you think are cool and create your dump of people you can reach out to. But before you simply reach out to every single person, you need to do your homework. You need to look up that person. For example, one criterion that would be to your advantage is if the person you are contacting is from your country. If I see a name that seems German, the researcher is going to be high up in my priority ranking, simply because we can connect a bit more on a personal level, because we are from the same country city or even college. Another cool story is that I use this same process to find my current ex-meta professor I'm working with and the Google DeepMind researcher I got the interview with. The funny thing was that this researcher himself had previously done an internship with my professor. So in our call, I mentioned that this professor is now my advisor and we were instantly more connected and had overall positive vibes. You see, I really want to emphasize the fact that we are reaching out to a normal human being that thinks he's nothing all too special and just enjoys doing research and working with cool people. So do your homework and figure out more about what research they are doing and find some more papers. Okay, back to Sam. We now have found him and wants to work with him. How do we properly reach out to him so that he doesn't just leave us on red? In other words, let's talk about how to write a good email, at least based on my opinion and experience. 
Dear Sam, I hope this email finds you well. My name is Boris, a computer science graduate student at the Technical University of Berlin, and I am writing to express my keen interest in the fascinating field of multimodal learning, particularly the convergence of vision and language modalities. This might sound friendly and sweet, but it is already too generic too long and contains a lot of empty words. Sam doesn't have the time to read through dozens of such emails that ramble around. What about this instead? Dear Sam, I am a computer science graduate student at the Technical University of Berlin and am deeply interested in the field of multimodal learning, specifically bridging vision and language modalities. In this opening paragraph, I don't even introduce myself. I directly provide a brief overview of my academic background and current status as a computer science graduate student and I tell him I'm interested in the same thing he is. The idea here is to get straight to the point and not waste any time. I want something from him, an internship, but I want to phrase it as if I'm offering something to him and offering him my name just doesn't provide him any value. That said, there is a case to be made that the name makes it more personal, so I'm not 100% against it, but this is just my logic. There will be people who like the name right away, and people who don't. In my world, less is more. Okay, this paragraph doesn't stop here. I told him about my current state, that I'm a computer science graduate student, so I should not be discarded right away, but now I directly tell him what I want. Your groundbreaking work in this area has inspired me, and I am eager to contribute to your ongoing research while learning learning from your wealth of expertise and experience. I'm reaching out to explore the possibility of conducting my internship under your esteemed supervision. Wow, that's a lot, huh? The idea is good, but execution is just way too much. <laughs> Let's hit the brakes a bit and reformulate. I would be honored if I could work with you, contribute to your ongoing research, learn from your experience and expertise, and conduct my internship under your supervision. You could even replace the word honored with the word thrilled, but now this is a mixture of telling him how great he is, asking for him to take me in, but also mentioning that I want to work with him specifically and contribute to his work. I want to make sure that my intention is to offer something to him and not just wanting from him. You can here quickly see what we currently have. This is just the high-level introduction to briefly introduce ourselves and our intention. We now need to at least somewhat prove that we have relevant experience to back up our claims of actually being able to help him in his work. It's cool to have the best intentions of helping, but if Sam has to teach you everything from scratch, you are more work to him rather than any help. This next section is where you list the relevant and selected experiences. I've often seen the section being written as a continuous text, and I'm guilty of doing so myself in the past, but once again, less is more. Make it as easy as possible for Sam to extract the information he might be interested in. I would, and did, structure this paragraph as a listicle where you always add the link to the project, when possible of course. Point 1. I've experienced contributing to a large open source project for robotic obstacle avoidance using deep reinforcement learning. Boom. Link. Moreover, I've published a respective paper in the journal XYZ. Boom. Link. Furthermore, I've experienced with independent research. I've implemented ABC and reproduced the original results by running and tracking experiments. Boom. Link. And so on. Even if you write selected experiences, you can really just list all you have and more or less pretend to have more that you just didn't mention. That said, you might be thinking, Boris, we are here just listing the things we have done and not really demonstrating actual skills. To which I would say, yes. Exactly. And I'll get to that in a second, but for this section, just keep in mind, the goal is to make yourself look as interesting as possible. Sam needs to want to know more, not directly hire you. This is precisely why there is one more paragraph, where we really make clear that we are a good fit, that our research interests are perfectly aligned, and we even go further. Listen to this. My research interests align with yours, specifically in being able to communicate with large language models about image and video content. After reading your papers X, Y, and Z, I was inspired to work on building upon your idea of ABC by doing yada yada yada. I here explicitly express this alignment in research interest, providing specific examples related to the research Sam has already done. This demonstrates a deep understanding of Sam's research and that I already have an idea of improving his work. Again, I'm making sure to show him 
that I am useful to him and not exploitative. In my case at least, this was genuinely honest because I like his research and did have some ideas. So make sure to do your research as well. The two paragraphs or sections above can be written once and then copied over to every new email you write. Only this research interest alignment paragraph really needs some customization. But we are now at a great point. We presented ourselves and made us as interesting as possible. But as mentioned, we are still quite high level, which is intentional. We want to make Sam curious. If he wants to know more, he can look at our resume that we will of course add to this email. But this email is not to get hired instantly. We simply want to get the chance to chat. That's why we end the email with something like this. I would greatly appreciate the opportunity to discuss my qualifications and interests with you further. Thank you for your time and consideration. Best regards. Boris. If Sam thinks you're interesting, that you have some skills he might need for a specific project of his, and if he has the capacity to hire you, Sam can invite you to a call directly with him and circumvent parts of the official application process. But yeah, this is the way I got my interview with a Google DeepMind researcher. That said, I didn't stop there. This was also the exact same process I went through to get my current job as a student researcher under my ex-meta professor. So you see, even if you don't get an internship, maybe if Sam doesn't have any open positions, you can follow this process for other purposes. For example, to simply collaborate with Sam, which will make it much easier to later, once Sam has an open position, join him. Or even just get outstanding experience for your resume. And standing out can be difficult. But there are other ways to stand out. There are different levels of things you can do that are a great way to get things going. So you might want to watch this video next to see which tips I have for you to stand out on your machine learning application that have worked for me and others. Bye bye!